Hello everyone, this is Dr. Nafkaran Singh, Assistant Professor, Department of Physiotherapy, RIMT University. The topic for today's discussion is Introduction to Rehabilitation Research. These are the contents or the outcomes which we will learn in today's discussion. So you will learn about the rehabilitation, the concept regarding that, what, how you define research. Then we will try to bridge the gap between these two terminologies. Then we will try to explain the characteristics of a rehabilitation research. Then the reasons for developing a rehabilitation research. Then in the last we will end this discussion with the list of barriers. So let's start by understanding the term rehabilitation. So rehabilitation is an action of restoring someone's normal or healthy life through training and therapy after an illness, imprisonment or addiction. So it is a broader term, it is an umbrella term under which there are various sub-disciplines. So it includes some set of interventions that are needed when someone experiences or is going to experience some uh, kind of a, a problem in his activity of daily living due to age or any health condition. It could be a chronic disease or disorder or it could be even a trauma or an injury. Now physiotherapists are an integral team member of a rehabilitation team. Now there are various other members along with there are nursing staff, there is general physician, there is occupational therapists, there are psychologists, there are speech therapists. So they all work in this field of rehabilitation to perform their duties. Now to put this concept in a context, let's take an example. Let, uh, the data shows that in 1947, the average age of an Indian citizen was 37 years. But in 2020, the average age has increased to 65 years. What it means that the Indian citizens are living a longer life. Now, it is a good thing, but on the other hand, it means that the systems of the body like cardiovascular systems, musculoskeletal systems, they have to work more. If something will work more, there are the chances of wear and tear. So here is the point where the rehabilitation team comes in and has a specific role to play depending upon the impairment, whether it is related to the vision, hearing or speech. Now in case of a movement disorder, the patient will be referred to a physiotherapist. Now I hope it is clear to you what we understand by the word rehabilitation. Now let's talk about what you understand by research. Now research has been defined by a lot of persons who have written about it. So one of the author that is Keringer, he was an engineer and a philanthropist. He said that it is a very high hat word and scares a lot of people. But you shouldn't be scared because it is just a state of mind. It is just a friendly attitude towards change. So it is just a composer mind instead of a fiddler mind. What it means that the researcher mind will never cheat or it will never copy something. Rather, it will compose of its own. It is a problem solving mind instead of a let it go mind. And most importantly, it is a tomorrow mind instead of a yesterday mind. So we can say that Research is a very uh, innovative concept in terms of rehabilitation, right? Now, Peyton was a physical therapist who has extensively written about research and he says that research should begin with an intellectual itch that needs a scratching. What he means is the curiosity, which is the mother of all knowledge and which all of us possess in ourselves from the childhood, that curiosity lets us find the answers to the unknown. When the unknown confronts us, we wonder. We try to find the answers for that. We try to gain full knowledge about that particular unknown. So that kind of a curiosity should always be there within you if, you, if we want to pursue this particular topic. Now, if we'll break the word research, it, it, it comes out to be re, that means again, and search to find. So search again and again. But in this case, we have to search about knowledge. 
but in a scientific and a systematic manner. So we can say that it is the art of scientific investigations. As I have already told you, a lot of authors have written about it. Redman and Mori defined research as a systemized effort to gain new knowledge. So all the authors emphasize on two main words, that is organized and systematic. So we have to also be organized and systematic if we want to approach this particular topic. Now in the end, we can define it in these six words. So research can be defined as either creation of new knowledge, addition of new knowledge to already existing knowledge or to check the validity of already existing knowledge but through objective, systematic and scientific approach. Now what we understand by when we say that it should be objective. So objectivity means that whatever results have come out they can be verified, they can be tested and obviously it should be through a scientific process or a systematic process which has the basis of an empirical scientific approach. So these six words will help you to understand the research better. Now coming to our today's topic that is rehabilitation research. Now we will try to bridge the gap between the two words. Now rehabilitation professionals generally believe that whatever they are doing makes a difference in the lives of the persons or the patients. Now this rehabilitation research is the means by which they can test this belief. So the idea is that in this uh, very uh, demanding uh, uh, world of healthcare, it is just not sufficient enough to say that we are doing good work. Rather, we should emphasize in, uh, or we should be willing to search or create evidence that, is, that supports our techniques which we practice in our clinics. Now, the one research professional who wants to learn about the rehabilitation research, he has to learn about certain skills and he has to gain some knowledge about this particular uh, subject. So he should know about the research methodologies and designs which are available, which he can put to answer his research question. He should have an understanding of the statistical and qualitative analysis. Why? Because just collecting the data is not our goal. Our goal is to bring some informative information from that. So that we can only do once we can analyze our data in a good way. Once we have reached a conclusive results, so the next steps comes out to be presenting that. Why? Because it should be presented in such a way that the consumer, that the consumer can easily go through it or he can receive it easily. Next is the writing part or the drafting part. This again forms a very important step because once you have completed your research, you will try to publish it. Once you will publish it, the person who is sitting in America, he is going to read it. So you will be not be present there to justify your study. So your writing should be, such a, uh, in, uh, should be su in such a way that it is easily perceived by the reader and he can easily understand that. So research is not a complicated thing. The only thing is you have to follow the laid down procedures or press or uh, steps you have to simply follow the steps let's let's say that if there are seven steps you have to start from one then you have to gradually go on and you have to reach step number seven you can't jump from step number one to straight away to step number five then to step number seven so you have to gradually and slowly uh, achieve this particular goal now the next outcome of our today's discussion should be that, that you should know the characteristics of a research. So research may have many characteristics, but we will emphasize on these three. The research challenges the status quo, it should be creative, and it should be systematic. So you can see here the word systematic comes again and again. So you have to take care of that. Now what we understand by when we say that research challenges the status quo. Now, Whatever 
research we do, the results might be in our favor. That means they might support the technique which we are doing in our clinical practice or it, it might be other way around. It might, uh, the results might show us that whatever we are practicing is ineffective. So whether the results go this way or that way, that is not the question. The question is, the, the, the question is regarding the challenge. The emphasis should be on challenging whatever you are practicing. So the questions like what, uh, what if I'll uh, try some other technique? What if the patient recovers on its own? These kinds of questions should continuously be in your mind while you are practicing research. So same way, uh, there are three ways in which we can challenge the status quo. First is gap in our knowledge. Then we can systematically test the effects of these practices. Then we can test the novel or traditionally avoided treatments. Now what we understand by the gap in our knowledge. Now generally what, whatever techniques we are practicing in our clinics, they are being passed from our past professionals or our senior professionals and there are very less chances that they have been validated. So, but nowadays a lot of uh, empirical studies are being done, meta-analysis are being done, critical reviews are being done which are helping us to validate all these studies. So, further this kind of attitude also pushes the rehabilitation, uh, re uh, rehabilitation research agenda, which is good for our rehabilitation professionals. Now, next is that we can again challenge by systematically testing the effect of the practices which we are using. Then the last way is that we test the novel or traditionally avoided treatments like Reiki or the sensory integration technique, which we can use to, on other conditions also. The next characteristic of research is to be creative. Rothstein in an editorial, he scolded physical therapists for their willingness to accept authoritarian views of their profession. Quote, unquote, our teachers and our texts tell us how it should be and we accept this in our eagerness to proceed with patient care. So the question here is you have to think out of the box because a researcher mind is a creative mind. He goes he goes past beyond this authoritarian views of others and he looks at the rehabilitation in a different way. He always have some questions in his mind like why, what if, why not. These are the central idea of research which makes you creative. So you have to have this attitude when you are approaching this particular topic. Next is research should be systematic. This is again a third characteristic of research. Now the clinical knowledge is anecdotal that means it is not reliable. Why? Again I have discussed it with you that why it is not reliable is because it is it has not gone through a systemic scientific research process. So first we have to validate it. Now let's say that if there is a patient A who is a 30 years old male and there is a patient B who is a 60 years old female. They both are having low back pain. Now does the same treatment should be given to them. Are you considering the other things like age, gender, weather or any other comorbidity which the patient might have. So we have to take care of these and we have we can control these settings in a research setup. Now the next is the reasons why there is a need to develop rehabilitation research. Now the ultimate goal of any profession can be to increase the knowledge base. Now we have started from a stone age, then we went into the industrial age and presently we are in the digital age. Now this is all possible, this all has been possible because of increase in the knowledge base. Because there was a urge, there was a urge for from various persons that we should develop something new. So same goes with the rehabilitation research. For example, our physiotherapy profession was introduced in India with a one year diploma and now we have a postdoctoral degree in that. Now how it is possible? Because we are continuously increasing the body of knowledge. Then the second reason is to develop to, uh, to determine whether the intervention works or not, what we are doing, what we are doing our, on our patients, whether it has been 
working or not and if not why it is not so to answer these questions there is a solid reason that a rehabilitation research should be developed and then the ultimate goal of a healthcare profession that is to improve the quality care of the patient now we are working day and night so that the patients who are suffering from various conditions they recover from them so ultimately to improve the quality and the quality can be only improved if we will research if we will research again and again about the same concepts in the last we will conclude this lecture with a list of barriers which includes i have introduced seven barriers there might be hundreds of the barriers once you start with the research process so first is lack of funds lack of research mentors lack of time lack of familiarity with the research process lack of statistical support then ethical concerns about use of human participants and animal subjects and the last the clinical and researcher dichotomy so we will discuss these barriers in detail in next lecture and in the last how we can overcome these barriers one thing is for sure that you will come across uh, these barriers once you start your journey in research but the idea is your commitment your time and your funds these all are required once you are ready to give in all these things you will be easily able to overcome all these barriers because nothing is impossible thank you and i hope this lecture will help you in your research